Look, here comes the Duke with his eyes full of anger. Mistress, dispatch you with your safest taste and get you from our court. Me, uncle? You, cousin. Within these ten days, if that thou beest found so near our public court as twenty miles, thou diest for it. I do beseech your grace, let me the knowledge of my fault bear with me. If with myself I hold intelligence or have acquaintance with mine own desires, if that I do not dream or be not frantic, as I do trust I am not, and dear uncle, never so much as in a thought unborn did I offend your highness. Thus do all traitors. If their defence did now consist in words, they are as innocent as grace itself. Let it suffice thee that I trust thee not. Yet your mistrust cannot make me a traitor. Tell me, where on the likelihoods depends... Thou art thy father's daughter! There's enough. So was I when your highness took his dukedom. So was I when your highness banished him. Treason is not inherited, my lord. Or if we did derive it from our friends, what's that to me? My father was no traitor! Then good, my liege. Mistake me not so much to think my poverty is treacherous. Dear Sovereign, hear me speak. Aye, Celia. We stayed her for your sake. Else had she with her father ranged along. I did not then entreat to have her stay. It was your pleasure and your own remorse. I was too young that time to value her, but now I know her. If she be a traitor, why, so am I. We still have slept together. Rose at an instant, learned, played eight together, and wheresoe'er we went, like Juno swan still, we went coupled and inseparable. She's too subtle for thee, and a smoothness, a very silence and a patience speak to the people and they pity her. Thou art a fool. She robs thee of thy name, and thou wilt show more bright and seem more virtuous when she is gone. I then open not thy lips! Firm. And irrevocable is my doom which I have passed upon her. She is banished. Pronounce that sentence then on me, my liege. I cannot live out of her company. <laughs> you are a fool. You, niece, provide yourself. If you outstay the time, upon mine honour and in the greatness of my word, you die. Ah! Oh. Ah! oh, my poor Rosalind. Whither wilt thou go? Wilt thou change fathers? I will give thee mine. I charge thee, be not thou more grieved than I am. I have more cause. Thou hast not, cousin. Prithee, be cheerful. No son, not the Duke hath banished me his daughter. That he hath not. No, hath not. Rosalind lacks then the love which teacheth her that thou and I am one. Shall we be sundered? Shall we part, sweet girl? No. Let my father seek another heir. Therefore, devise with me how we may fly, whither to go and what to bear with us, and do not seek to take your change upon you, to bear your griefs yourself and leave me out, for by this heaven... Now at our sorrow's pale, say what thou canst, I'll go along with thee. Oh, whither shall we go? <laughs> to seek your father in the forest of Arden. Alas, what danger shall that be to us, maids as we are, to travel forth so far? Beauty provoketh thieves sooner than gold. I'll put myself in poor and mean attire, and with a kind of umber smirch my face, the like to you. So shall we pass along and never stir a sailor? Were it not better that I did suit me all points like a man? A gallant curtilax upon my thigh, a boar spear in my hand, and in my heart lie there what hidden woman's fear there will. What shall I call thee when thou art a man? I'll have no worse a name than Jove's own page. And therefore look you call me Ganymede. But what shall you be called? Something that hath a reference to my state. No longer Celia, but Aliena. But cousin, what if we essayed to steal the clownish fool out of your father's court? Would he not be a comfort to our travel? He'll go along over the wide world with me. <laughs> Leave me alone to woo him. Let's away. 
and get our jewels and our wealth together, devise the fittest time and safest way to hide us from pursuit that will be made after my flight. Now, go we in content to liberty and not to banishment. <laughs>